What's up guys, Jordan here with Objective C Toros, lesson 29, and in this lesson we're going to be going over the for loop. And you may be saying, well, what is a loop? Well, a loop is something that allows a set of instructions to repeat until a certain condition is met. And loops are a fundamental part of programming, and they're in most programming languages. Now, you should be fairly familiar with loops because we've been using the for in loop for quite a few lessons now. But in this lesson, we're going to be going over the for loop. And in the next two, we're going to be going over the while loop and the do while loop. Now, we've already covered the for in loop, like I said, and the for in loop is actually just a special case of the for loop. And right there, you can see a nice little generic example of a for loop. Uh, it has for, which says this is a for loop, and then there's something called a counter, then a condition, which has to be met, and then the counter gets updated. And then there's the statements that, uh, are executed if the condition is true. But I'm going to be going over all this in detail in the next two slides. Now, a for loop repeats a set of statements a specific number of times, as many as you want, and it uses a variable as a counter to tell it the number of times to repeat. OK, so how for loops work. Well, each time it hits the bottom of the loop, it goes back to the top of the loop to see if the condition still applies. And right there, you can see a great example of what the top of a for loop may look like. And this is something that I really had a hard time with when I first started learning about loops. I didn't understand this top of the loop where you declare some integer, you assign a value, and then you say if this integer is less than or greater than or equal to a number and then you have this i plus plus i didn't understand any of that for quite a while until i read something and i don't know just the way they explained it i was really able to get it so i'm going to try to explain it in a really easy way to understand it because if you don't explain this right it can be kind of tricky to get but uh, like i said now i'm going to go through this loop and how it works in detail and right there at the bottom of this slide you can see the generic loop and then a good example loop kind of contrasting now the for loop in detail so up there at the top you see four and this tells the compiler it's a for loop that's pretty basic all right now in parentheses you see int i equals one what you do is you declare an integer in this case we're just going to call it i you can call it whatever you want and then we assign a value to it so the counter is initialized after we do this. Then the counter is evaluated when we put in i is less than 4. Now, if this is true, the statements are executed. So if i is really less than 4, those statements, which in this case is just an NS log, it's executed. And in this case, it is true because 1 is less than 4. Now, if it is false, the loop ends and the rest of the program after the loop continues. And since it is true, that NS log, uh, it's executed. Next, I++. And if you don't remember, this is an incrementer, so it adds 1 to the variable of I. So I is now equal to 2. And uh, now steps 3 through 5 are repeated until the condition is false, and then the rest of the program continues. So next, uh, well, since i is now 2 because we added 1 to i, it'll go through again and it'll uh, see if that condition is true. 2 is less than 4. That's correct. So it'll run through everything again. i will be updated to 3. Then is 3 less than 4? Yes, it is. Goes through the loop again. Then uh, it's incremented. Now i equals 4 now. And then it's 4 is less than 4. Well, that's not true. That's false. So it doesn't run that NS log again it just jumps to the end of the loop and continues with the program so that's how for loops work and that's why you have that integer value there and then that's why what that i plus plus at the end means you're just adding one to it each time uh, you go through the loop now you may be saying well what's really the difference between for and for in well, the difference is that a for in loop doesn't have a counter like the for loop does, but simply iterates through an array until it goes through each value in the array. And you should be very familiar, like I've said already, with the for in loop because we've gone over it quite a few times in uh, past lessons. Now, um, you can have a for loop that iter iterates through an array. 
how you would do it is you would say four, then you'd set up that counter n equals one, and then you would set it that counter n less than or equal to, and then you would call the array, and then you'd call method count. And this method um, is for arrays, and it tells you the number of elements the array has inside of it. So if this array had 10 elements in it, you would essentially be saying one is less than or equal to 10. And that's true, so then it would run through uh, the statement. So that's how you could uh, use a for loop to do the really the same job that a for in loop does. And above the for loop is the same as this for in loop. So you can kind of see the contrast uh, between the two loops, but how they really do the same job. Now the initialization and increase fields are optional. So you don't have to put that counter and incrementer up there at the top of the for loop. But even if you don't, you still need to put that semicolon before the condition. So you'd have to say semicolon i's less than four semicolon parenthesis. So uh, in the example right above, you would have already initialized the counter someplace else in code and the incrementer or increaser is in the statements of the for loop. And the comma operator allows you to implement some very detailed counters for a for loop. Uh, so in this example we have int x equals 0, y equals 10, x then the condition x is less than or equal to y and then the incrementers are x plus plus so you add one each time and then y you subtract two and then reassign that to y so uh, tell me in the comments below how many times that for loop would run based off of uh, that counter now uh, now we're gonna jump into Xcode and add a for loop to our program okay so here we are in Xcode and you can just go to the budget object dot m file and how we're gonna be adding this for loop to our program is we're going to be adding it right here to create multiple transactions that we can then pass through our program. And typically you wouldn't be adding a loop to create multiple transactions or objects in a program. Uh, you would be using a loop in much the way that we use this loop down here. That's uh, really how you would be using them in a typical program but nonetheless how we're going to be using them we we're still working with loops and the, working with the mechanics of them and we'll, we're still going to understand how they work and everything but it's just not a typical way that you might use them but really that's fine but first before we add the loop we're going to add or we're going to begin to add a new object we're going to call transaction then a transaction. All right, now we can begin the for loop. So for int, uh, I'll say n equals 1. Then when n is less than 3, whoops, and then n plus plus. Okay. And then close out the loop. Now we're going to make a few modifications. What we're going to do is, since we already began this uh, transaction object, which is called a transaction, we can just put a transaction right here and finish out the declaration. Or, yeah. And then we just have to switch all these to a transaction. And then we're going to add a transaction, obviously, to this NS mutable array that we already created up here. Now, you may be saying, well, how are you going to do this? Because you're going to run through this loop two times based on this information up here. And you're going to create this object twice. And how is that going to work? Because aren't you recreating the name? And you, it may be a little confusing. That's fine if it's confusing and you're not quite understanding it because I had a lot of problem with this and it took me quite a while to really grasp this concept but basically what's going on is you begin the object declaration up here or actually you declare the object up here and then you just reassign values to it 
down here. But after each time you assign a new value, you add it to the transactions array. So let me just comment all of this out real quickly and go down here to the bottom and show you a little example with variables that makes it very easy to understand what's going on. So I'm just going to declare an int some number. All right, so saying int some number is very much like saying transaction a transaction. All right, now we're going to assign a value to some number. So some number, let's say equals two. Now we're going to ns log this. So some number equals and then percent i some number. Now we're going to assign the value of three to some number and we're going to copy and paste that ns log. Now let's see what happens if we add some number plus some number since we assigned two values. Uh, percent i and some number plus some number. Okie dokie. Now we're going to build and run real quick. Save all. Okay, so as you can see, the first time we assign two to some number and some number equals two. Then we assigned a new number to it. We assigned three to it and three was displayed. Now we added some number plus some number and it doesn't take the first some number, which was two, and adds it to the latest some number, which was three. It takes the latest number, which is three, and adds it together. And so some number plus some number, or three plus three, equals six. So that's very much like what we're going to be doing up here. What's going on is that we're just reassigning the value and then adding it to the NS mutable array each time. So we can go ahead and delete all of this and also I'm going to put n times 100 for the value so each time it'll be increased by 100 because n each time will be increased by 1 so uh, the second time it'll be 2 times 100 so that's kind of cool it'll add some different uh, amounts for the transaction now we can go down to our switch down here and we need to make a few modifications. We need to change this to loop transaction. Whoops. And we can go ahead and change this. And that's all of the modifications of the code for this lesson. So we can go ahead and build and run. Save all. Okay, now everything built and ran correctly. The first time it was converting $100 and then the second time $200 and everything after these two statements is outside that loop that we modified so it ran just like how it ran last time because we didn't change anything to it. So in the next lesson we're going to be adding a loop to this transaction and then the lesson after that we're going to create a new transaction and then add a loop to that one and then will be all done working with loops. So thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to leave any comments, suggestions, or questions down below. Also be sure to like and favor this video if it helped you out and be sure to subscribe so you can be notified when I upload lesson 30 and any future videos. But until then, check out some of my other videos and any lessons that you may have missed and hopefully I'll see you in my next lesson real soon. Thanks for watching.